All right. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to Adobe Creative Cloud on Mondays. Photography Day. Monday's Photography Day. Tuesday's InDesign. Wednesday will start to become back to the basics. But as it stands right now, happy Monday. Welcome, everyone. I see a bunch of people in the room already. So let's start with Valdir. Uh, good afternoon all the way from Brazil. Uh, Colleen from, uh, from uh, <laughs> Cape Town. Uh, I was thinking Johannesburg, but Cape Town. Rachel, welcome everybody. Adolph, Victoria, welcome as well on the Facebook side. And I see people popping in. Cheryl B from Twitter. And just, it's going to be a party. Hey, Paul, what's going on? Um, good evening and good afternoon and good night. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about Lightroom because uh, I was just at a photo conference uh, teaching Lightroom and Photoshop and a lot of questions came up around collections in Lightroom Classic because people are used to their images coming in in folders and then just doing everything from the folder. And they're like, well, why would I ever need a collection? So I, I started explaining some of the reasons. And then as it beca became clear that more and more people just didn't get it, I said, you know what? That's going to be Monday's video. So uh, Jesse, welcome first time viewer. And so today we're going to be talking about uh, seven advantages to collections as opposed to working with folders in Lightroom Classic. Now, uh, if you're on the other version of Lightroom, the newer version, which is the cloud-based version, uh, the terminology is different. There are folders, but those are folders of albums, and albums are collections. So there is no folder to manage your photos in that version. But in Classic, there absolutely are folders and what we call collections. So let's jump over to computer so I can, or to the computer so I can show you what I'm talking about and give you those seven reasons. All right, so here I am in Lightroom. I taught a tethering class last week, just showing people how to do tethering. And these are some of the sample shots I was just taking. Uh, we had a volunteer model there. I was just taking some shots showing how the tethering worked inside of Lightroom. And I was shooting with my, uh, my Nikon Z6 mirrorless camera. All right, so we've got the shots in here. And of course, they came in in a folder. Um, I even showed how to do segments with tethering. So I got different folders for different shots. Um, and, and that's great. And so you, you're probably saying, well, Terry, I can see my photos, print my photos, edit my photos, develop my photos. Well, I can do that all from here. Why would I need to work with collections? If you're doing it in the folders, you're doing it I wouldn't say the wrong way, but you're doing it the hard way. You're missing out on some benefits that collections give you that folders just don't. Uh, folders are physically where your pictures are. They are where your images are in the hard drive. So this whole folders panel over here on the left-hand side, this is literally a mirror of your hard drives, if you have more than one, your hard drives that you've used to import images into Lightroom. So when we say import, really all Lightroom did was look at that folder that you told us to import from, and it says, okay, I know where those 30 photos are. They're on this drive, they're in this folder, they're in this location, and I'm just gonna show them to you in Lightroom. So they physically aren't in Lightroom. Lightroom is just a database or a catalog looking at your images on your hard drive. That's what the folders are. So if I were to right click on this folder, and say, show it to me in the finder, it will go to the operating system and show me those, um, how many ever shots there are here, six shots. And it's the same six shots that are here. So if I delete one out of here, Lightroom's not gonna know about it anymore. It's gonna give me an error. It's gonna say, I don't know what happened to that photo. So I always tell people, don't mess with the operating system. Make all your changes in Lightroom. If you wanna rename, if you wanna move things around, you wanna do all that, do that in Lightroom. And I've got a video on, on how to move your images around in Lightroom. But that's not what we're here for. So that's, I was just explaining how folders work in Lightroom. Now let's talk about collections and why collections. So reason number one is that if I like this image and I also like this black and white image, and I also like maybe a third image, let's say uh, just for example, this image, 
Well, they're in three different folders. And if I'm working in folders, the only way I'm going to be able to see all three of them together is either physically move them, change their location on the hard drive in Lightroom, drag them into a different folder, which I don't want to do that. That's going to screw me up. Or I'd have to do a whole bunch of filtering all the time. I'd have to go up to the filter menu. I have to go up to the filter options here and say, show me these three photos some kind of way. And I, that would be a pain in the butt. But if I were to go in and create a collection, and collections are just further down on the same panel, you have a collections panel, and I were to go in and click and create a new collection, I can say, for example, Amani, her name's Amani, Amani Favorites. And when I create that collection, it's going to automatically by default include any ones that I've already selected. So I've already got one selected, so it's going to import it. I'm not going to do this just yet. So I'm going to import that or include that one. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create. And there it is, the Amani Favorites um, collection. And so let me twirl up some of these so it won't take me so far so long to get to them. All right, so there it is. And let's say now I want to use some of the other ones that I liked. I liked, uh, if we go back up here, I like the black and white. So I can take the black and white now and drag it into Amani Favorites. And now there are two there. I can go back up and go to that other um, folder. And not that one, this one. There we go. And there's one that I retouched. So let's go ahead and drag that into Amani Favorites. So now I've got my three favorites in a collection that came from all different folders. When I pull them into that collection, that didn't move them. They're still in their folders. They're still in the hard drive where they originally were. But now I can organize them the way I want. I can change their order. Um, I can edit them. If I edit them, I am editing the actual photo. So when I go back to the folder, it's going to be edited too. So for example, if I were to go to this photo, just, just do a quick crop, and I were to crop it like so, and um, just get off the crop real quick and go back. Well, when I go to that folder, wherever that came from, it's going to be cropped because I'm cropping the actual photo. But working in collections, Benefit number one lets me pull together different images from different folders. They don't all have to be in the same folder if I want to work with them together. And a classic example I, I give is, let's say you have a favorite vacation or travel spot that you go to. Pick one. Um, um, Hawaii. So you go to Hawaii every year. And every year, of course, you have a new folder from Hawaii 2017, Hawaii 2018, Hawaii 2019, and so forth and so on. Now, that those folders could have hundreds of images in each one. But then, when you want to put together your favorite Hawaii shots, well, you don't want to move them from the folders they were in. You would put them in a collection. So, think of collections the same way you manage your music. You have your whole music library, and you have playlists. And playlists can contain songs from different albums, different artists that you want to hear together in the order you want to hear them in. So that's benefit number one. Benefit number two. Let's say that I also have a collection or I want to create a collection called Favorite Black and White. So B&W, Black and White. Well, I'm going to include that black and white photo. And now that photo is in favorite black and white. It's in Amani favorites. And it's still in a folder because that's where it lives. So benefit number two, a photo can be in multiple collections and not take up any extra space. If you start duplicating that image on the hard drive to put it in multiple folders, you are taking up extra space. And in folders, there is no other way for the same image to be in multiple folders. You'd have to duplicate it. So with this, I have the ability to have the same photo in multiple collections and work with it or edit it or do whatever I want to do with it. And again, uh, if I go back to the black and white one, it's there and I can start pulling in other black and whites from different, um, different shoots. So for example, let's say I go here and let's say that one's not a black and white yet. But let's say I pull it into my favorite black and whites. 
And now we just go into the develop module and we quickly convert it to a black and white. I just hit the letter V. Uh, I didn't style it or anything, but it gave me a black and white. So now we're talking about two totally different shoots, two totally different people in the same collection and without touching the folders, without moving the images around. The images are still where they used to be. All right, that's benefit number two. The same image can appear in multiple collections. Benefit number three, and this is a big one. This is definitely a can't do with folders. If you wanna see your images on your mobile devices, well, there's Lightroom for iOS, there's Lightroom for Android, so you can run Lightroom on your iPhone, you can run it on your iPad, you can run it on your Android devices. The only way to see those images on Lightroom on your mobile device is to sync them. And you can only sync a collection, you can't sync a folder. So if I say, hey, I would love to have my favorite black and whites now synced, well, there's a little checkbox that all I would do is just enable syncing. And now those two images will be synced and it will show up as an album on Lightroom on my iPad, my iPhone, or my Android device, or all three if I had multiple devices. All right, so that's benefit number three is that they can be synced to mobile devices. Benefit number four, and this is a big one too. So let's say I go back to this one. And let's say for whatever reason, I want to remove that black, um, that black shadow there. It's a shadow. It's supposed to be there. But let's say I wanted to take it out. Um, well, I, it's easier to do that in Photoshop than it would be to try and do that in Lightroom. Well, so if I right click on this photo and I go up to my, um, I can also do it from the keyboard. But if I go edit in Photoshop, that'll pop me over to Photoshop. It'll open up a copy of the original because I'm working with a raw file. And once it opens that up, I'll be able to make changes to it. And I think it opened. Let's see. There it is. Okay. So now if I were to go in and I were to say, hey, I would love to remove the shadow. Let's go ahead and patch the whole thing out. It's not going to be a great job at it because I'm just doing this for a demo. Um, but let's say that we also, we, we could try it on normal. Let's see what happens. We'll patch it out. There we go. Actually, I did better than I thought it would. And we'll patch that out too. And we'll patch out a little bit of that shadow halo on the left side there. Okay, so shadow's been removed. So now I save it. And you're saying, oh my God, you didn't make a duplicate layer. You're saving it. No, I'm saving on copy, remember? Because it made a copy from the raw file. So when I close it, because I was in a collection, it always puts it right next to the original. So benefit number four, it's a more streamlined process when you're editing and, and, and round tripping from Photoshop back, it will put it right next to the original in the same collection. If you do that in a folder, it could stick it at the end of the folder. You, if you got 300 images in there, good luck, you have to find it. You, you're just gonna take more work if you do it in a folder. And a collection puts it right next to it. Okay, um, is there an indicator where the original image is? Uh, there is no indicator other than in, in your hard drive, it will give you the path of where the folder is. If you ever wanted to see where the original is, you can always right click and you could say show it to you in the operating system or go to the folder where it is. Um, so there are multiple ways to get to where it is, where the original is. Uh, and keep in mind, this is the original. I'm working on the original now. There is no copy, so to speak. This is the original. I'm just working on it in a collection. Uh, but yeah, you can get to where it is on the operating system or where it is in a folder just by right-clicking on it and choosing it. Okay, so next one, benefit number five. And this is one that I wasn't really thinking about because I've always been using collections. But if you go into another module, let's say you go into the slideshow module, you want to run a slideshow. Well, in every other module except library, you only have access to your collections. Your folders aren't even here. So if you wanted to access images in a different folder, you'd have to go back to the library first, choose them in the folder, then go back to that module to work on them. But if you're in a collection, collections appear in all the modules.
folders don't. So there's another benefit right off the bat. All right, benefit, uh, and that was benefit number five, collections appear in all the modules. Benefit number six, and this is a big one for me now. So let's say I go back to um, that folder we were talking about, or these folders. So let's say I want to take all of these images that I was working on. And, um, well, not, yeah, it's not the test, actually. Let's do this, this, and this. Okay, so I want to take all of these images. And by the way, while we're here, we're going to delete the, the rejects. Let's get rid of those. So now those are all gone. So I'm in the folders now. These are the actual images. I want to take all of her images from the three different folders that I shot. I'm going to select all. I'm going to create a new collection. <laughs> Wrong spot. Let's go down here. There we go. Create a new collection. And when I create that new collection, and I'll call it Amani Gallery, I also have the ability, and again, this is something you can't do. I already talked about this. You can't do this with a folder. But right on the spot, while I'm creating this collection, I can sync it with Lightroom on, on, in the cloud. So once I do that, it will create a synced collection. And the benefit of doing that is if I want to share this with her now, I can go in and hit Make Public. So Make Public means I'll get a link to this to give her to just look at these images. And there's also collaborative proofing now, which is a technology preview. So if I say make public, it was just showing me the steps. It has already, it's, has already, it has already. There we go. It has already generated a custom URL to those photos. And I can now click that URL and it will take me to those photos on the web and show me her gallery. And I would just give her that link. Hey, or give whoever you shot these for, or whatever event you were doing, whatever family function, whatever it was. You want to see all the photos I just shot? Here you go. Here's a link. You can go look at them. And then as a Lightroom, um, as a Lightroom clouds or Lightroom subscriber, I can also control what they can do with the link. So I can turn on or off downloading. They can download JPEGs or not. Uh, they can also download a zip file. I can also... Um, I can control um, how they see the images. I can control the sort order and all that. So I have controls over that if I just simply head over to lightroom.adobe.com. So here I am in lightroom.adobe.com uh, where I've, I'm just going to refresh. And there are the two gal there are two albums now, two collections I just shared. Here's the one that already says it's shared uh, behind my head here. There we go. See, it says shared down at the bottom. And that one's already shared. Um, if I wanted to share this one, I could. But how do I control the sharing options? I would go right up here and I would click and I would then be able to not only get the link, I can control who can view. So anyone can view it right now or I can say invite only, only the email addresses that I put in um, that will get shared. I can also choose how, how they will be displayed. Uh, so I can arrange the photos, so forth and so on. And more importantly, I can allow different settings. So if I want her, her or anyone else to be able to download these, I can turn on JPEG downloading or not. I can turn on showing the metadata, showing the um, copyright information, the location and all that stuff. I can also control whether or not they can comment or not. So I can turn that on or off. The other big thing about being able to put these on the web like this is down here in the lower left corner, there's a button for collaborative proofing. This is a technology preview, it's a beta, but you now have the ability to not just share a gallery with your client and have them randomly go through them and, and message you back or you know heart them or whatever. You have the ability to actually go in and turn on proofing. And when you do that, it'll generate a different link. So this is different than the sharing link. This will be the one you give to the client where you want feedback. You want the images that they chose. And you can also limit the number that they can choose. They can see them all, but contractually, maybe I said I'd only retouch seven of them. So she or he or whoever would be able to pick the seven favorites they want. 
and then they would show up here, the ones they picked when I refresh this page after they do it. So this is, again, you can't be done with a folder. Impossible. All right, so that was number six, is that you can share collections. You can do collaborative or client proofing with collections, uh, none of which can be done with a folder. All right, last but not least, and this is kind of a really cool one, is that all the collections I've shown you to date are manually generated, meaning I'm dragging images in or out of a collection. So for example, in this one, since I have the PSD and I have the original file with the shadow, well, I don't need the original file because I retouched it. I don't need it in this collection. So I can hit delete and that just removes it from the collection. It's still in the folder where it exists on our drive. So this way I can control, minimize what the person or what I'm seeing based on that. But here's the cool one. Everything I've done to date, everything I've shown you so far is manual. And yes, the published images are JPEGs, as I've said a few times. Um, the uh, Everything I've done so far is manual. But what if I want Lightroom to generate a collection based on criteria? So for example, you have the ability to go in and create what's called a smart collection. So creating a collection is just a manual collection. You're going to add images to it, drag images to it, uh, take images out when you don't want them in there anymore. That's all manual. But a smart collection, you don't put anything in it manually. It builds the collection based on what you tell it you want. So for example, a smart collection, I can say, um, let's call it just favorite uh nikon z6 so uh, there's a space in z6 okay so my favorite nikon z6 shots all right how does that work well i would first of all i have to tell it use the camera so i can i can use any one of these um, pieces of criteria or multiple criteria so i can say camera info the camera and i have to be very specific or at least use a contains or starts with or whatever and I know the way this camera is, is recognized in Lightroom as is Nikon Z space six. So if I don't do anything else and just say create, that will create a collection of every Z six shot I've taken in Lightroom. So all 3,919 shots instantly appeared in that collection. Just like that. I don't have to go looking around. I don't have to figure it out. I have to go folder by folder by folder trying to figure out which ones were shot with the Z6 and which ones weren't. It just does it. Now, I said I wanted to see my favorites. Well, my favorites could be determined several ways. It could be a five-star rating. It could be a pick flag. It could be the color green. It could be whatever I want. So I'm going to just pretend that my favorites are all five stars. So I'm going to right-click on that collection I just built and edit it. So edit the smart collection. And now I'm going to add a piece of criteria. Not only do I want the ones that were shot with the Z6, but I also want rating five stars. And I could keep going. I can say Nikon Z6, five star rating, shot on a Tuesday, <laughs> you know, so forth and so on. And it will keep building the criteria that I tell it, and it will give me um, those shots. And these are all the different pieces of criteria you can use. You can use it has a pick flag or not. It has a certain color or not. It has a smart preview or not. It has snapshots or not. The source is in a folder, a particular collection, a published collection or published via. It's uh, got a particular file name sequence or not. It's in a particular date range, whether it was captured or edited. It's a particular camera. I want to see all of my Z6 favorite shots shot with an F or shot with a uh, shot at F. Uh, four or shot with a 24 to 70 lens. So I can even specify what lens I'm looking for. I can say shot in a particular location. Uh, so show me all my favorite Z6 shots, five stars or more shot in Hawaii. I haven't been to Hawaii yet with this camera, but uh, I could do that. So it just goes on and on and on and on. All right, so now I've told it Z6, five stars only, save, and boom, it just narrows it down to just those with five stars. Now, what if I go in and say, oh, well, these two are pretty much the same shot. If I make, if I turn off the five stars on one of these shots, watch what happens. If I just do anything um, four or less, it immediately removed it 
because, oh, doesn't meet the criteria anymore. It was shot with a Z6, but it's not five stars. So takes it right out. If I now go in and go to go back to a Z6 shot, let's go back to one of the Amani ones, because that was those are ones I shot with a Z6. So let's go to black and white. And now I'll give that a five star. And I come back to my um my wherever it is, favorite Z6. That black and white's in there now. Because it was shot with a Z6, it didn't have a five-star rating, but I just gave it one. Now they're there. So this collection constantly updates based on information that meets the criteria or stops meeting the criteria. If it stops meeting the criteria, taken out. Meets the criteria, put in. And it stays in until you don't meet the until it doesn't meet the criteria anymore. And you can have as many smart collections as you want. All right, um, can you use Command Z to undo that in a smart collection? Yes, you can undo, it would be the undoing the five stars and that should work. Switch module, took the five stars off. So yeah, you can un undo is undo. It doesn't matter whether or not it was done with a, um, with a smart collection or not. So if I go back, now that one's gone. If I go back to that black and white and put the five stars back on, now, if I put four stars on, is it going to be in there? It better not be, because it's only four stars. I told it to look for five stars or more. So if I go back and make it, nope, that's a five star now, it puts it in there because it's five stars. So you can um, play around with that all day long. Smart collections are awesome. Now, the only disadvantage to a smart collection as opposed to a, a what do you call it a dumb collection, a manual collection, is that smart collections, unfortunately, can't be synced. So they have the same limitation on syncing that folders do, but they have every other benefit. And there's nothing stopping you from taking, let's say you did want to sync these at this point in time, there's nothing stopping you from taking all of these and making a dumb collection from them and then syncing that. So we can go in, we can say create collection, we can call it dumb collection, Include the selected photos and sync them with Lightroom. And now I've made a dumb collection. Now this one's frozen in time. This one will not update automatically, but it will sync. So if any given time you wanted to do that, you could. All right. So uh, I've got uh, I've got basically the seven reasons. So the seven reasons. Quick recap: Photos can be in a collection from different folders. So for example, um, favorite black and whites. These are two different images from two different folders. Uh, the same photo can appear in multiple photo or multiple collections. So here's the black and white in this one. Here it is in this one. Here it is in this one. It can appear in as many collections as possible without taking up any extra space. Uh, you can edit. Uh, oh, you can sync your regular collections to a to the to your mobile devices. Now, where I use that the most and where I really dig doing that is in my TWP, Terry White Photography um, uh, collection set, I've got all my portfolios as collections. So if I go to my portfolios for, for example, for droneography, for drone shots, this, this, this is my drone portfolio. So if I ever wanna show someone my portfolio on my phone or my iPad, well, it's synced. So all I have to do is bring up that, bring up that device and here you go, they can swipe through them or I can hit present mode and they can present through them without doing any external editing. And, um, and anything I add to this will automatically be synced. Anything I take out of it will automatically be not synced anymore to that collection. And it's, a, it's my favorite way to have my current portfolios with me at all times on my mobile devices. So that's another reason why I love um, love the collections for syncing. All right, number four is when you do an edit, which we did. We did the edit uh, here, and it put it right back to the, next to the original. I took the original out, but it puts it right next to the original when you do an edit round trip to Photoshop. Number, um, that was number four. Number five, collections appear in all the modules, the develop module, the book module, the slideshow module. Uh, someone said, can I do, do a slideshow? Well, it's really just a matter of going to the slideshow module and customizing the settings. So if I hit play now, that will play the slideshow. 
um, which I'm at the end of it. Let's go back to the beginning. There we go. Let's try it again. Now to play the slideshow, slideshows can be synced with music. You can go full screen. You can export a slideshow out as a video. You can do all kinds of things with your slideshows. Let's try that again. There we go. So uh, playing the slideshow here, it is playing the images, um, even doing a little panning and zooming of the images, kind of like a Ken Burns effect. And if I wanted to export this out, um, I have the ability to export it out as a uh, video somewhere down here. I have the ability to save it as a video. All right, so um, another advantage to uh, collections is that whatever I want to run a slideshow from, I can choose that right now here uh, in the slideshow module without having to go back to the library module just to switch folders. Number number six, uh, you can share your collections on the web. Uh, so they appear as albums in your mobile devices. They appear in lightroom.adobe.com. And number seven, you can create smart collections. So smart collections, um, let me stop this. There we go. Smart collections uh, are awesome. I have all, I have a whole folder of smart or a whole collection set of smart collections uh, that just give me instant access to all kinds of images based on the criteria that I'm looking for. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Can you make a smart collection based on keywords? Absolutely. Let's see if I missed anything else. Um, can you put a range of stars? Absolutely. So I want images that are from three to five stars. Not just three, not just four, not just five. You can put a range in, absolutely. Um, <laughs> make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, Thomas can hear me loud and clear. I didn't change anything, but thanks. Deb Davis is in the house. Kevin Stewart's in the house, welcome. And all right, I think I got all the questions I saw there. Let me see if I can see any, any questions I missed here. And if not, we'll call it a day. Are these published pictures? Oh, yeah, I already answered that. They're JPEGs. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Yep, I answered that one. Um, can you multiply photos using Lightroom? It depends on what you mean by multiply, Paul. If you're talking about putting together like a, um, a, um, a, a, a collage, I guess would be the way I would look, think of multiply. It can be done in the print module. So if I go to the print module, I have the ability to um, select multiple images and have them appear uh, three up, four up, five up, anywhere that I design this page. So if that's what you meant by multiply, then yes, that can be done, as you've just seen. All right. So I think that was it for what I saw in questions. If I missed your questions, sorry about that. Oh, two new comments. Hang on. Jump down here. You're welcome. And <laughs> all right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So uh, with that said, cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. And we will catch you on the next one. Tomorrow is InDesign Tuesday. So if you like InDesign, want to know more about InDesign, same time, same channel, except for on Facebook, it will be the InDesign channel. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one, which is tomorrow. Bye, everybody.